I will bless the Lord at all times and allow his praise to continually be in my mouth. I'm Bob Fowler, and what an honor, privilege, and joy it is to be with you at the time of this live stream on this beautiful Monday. I pray that you had a blessed, blessed weekend because Aedas and I had a tremendous weekend. I had the privilege of having such a wonderful conversation with my good friend, Pastor Godwin Makanga in Uganda. I just love that name. It sounds like he should be the president of the country. You never know what God has in store for you, Pastor Godwin. But just a precious, sweet brother that we've worked with in the past, doing different projects, but most importantly, having tremendous fellowship. We send blessings to you and your family and the ministry there, and thank you for your continual commitment to our ministry, Faith is the Victory Fellowship. We feel that we are in covenant relationship together, and I am excited. Hey, I... We, <laughs> uh, we're going to begin this program with prayer because I feel in my heart to some of you, you're, you're just standing in a place that you're in need of prayer, but uh, I want to begin this week with just a word of prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we can already tell through the interruptions and interferences of the enemy, even today with Wi-Fi and computer issues and all of that, that the enemy is troubled by this message. But when the enemy is troubled, we are grateful. And so we ask you today that you would use this program to not only drive back the forces of the enemy in people's lives, he's not being defeated, he's already been defeated. We've already won, we're already victorious, we're already triumphant in you. And so we look at everything through past tense lenses. We're already healed. We're already delivered. We're already saved. The question is, have we received it? So help us today, Father, to learn in a greater measure how to receive. In Jesus' name, we pray, we declare, amen. Let's get into this. How to receive. Now, I'm going to mention one thing about Friday night's program. If you didn't catch it, I haven't gone back and really watched it, but it was a different program. It was one of those programs where the Holy Spirit intervenes and he just begins to speak and flow. And those are the best moments. For me, that is the closest to heaven on earth I have ever gotten. When I sense the Holy Spirit moving and I grab my spiritual surfboard and I jump in and ride that wave at the highest point of the crest where I can see everything, hear everything, and observe everything. Ah, what a great moment when the Holy Spirit begins to move. So I want to encourage you, go back and watch Friday night's program. And listen, what's up with you guys? Share programs. Share them with people. It's sowing a seed. You may be shut in. You may feel like, I'd like to go to Africa, but I can't. Don't have the money, don't have the physical strength, whatever. You can share a program with somebody. Come on, if you're on Facebook, you got at least one friend. Share some of these programs. They can set people free, liberate them, change them. So I want to encourage you. Come on, get on the ball. Amen. Don't just be a, an observer. Be a participant. Don't just sit in the stands. Get out on the field. And let's be proactive in our faith. Amen. Stand up. Come on, you're a child of God. You got the Spirit of the Lord living in you. Come on, be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. You may feel like David. I'm smaller than everybody else. I've been hidden. Nobody knows me. And those that know me, they've heard bad things about me. And I'm a good guy. Come on, no matter what the pressure, stress, or difficulty, stand up. Be bold. The Word of God says be bold, be strong, be of good courage. Come on, you're not going to ever find the Lord telling you, Come on, bow your head down, act like a wimp. No, come on. You've got the Holy Spirit, the mighty power of God active and alive in your life. What are you doing with that blessing of relationship with him? How to receive, part 11. Let's get into this. God, I want to begin today by, by letting you know God has more for you. Even in your life, if you can look back, and I got to tell you, in my life, I can look back and see moments where I have seen the power of God 
in literal demonstration with you. I've shared with you the story. My first opportunity to minister was in a place called uh, Harvest Ranch, Indiana. It was about 65 miles away from Indianapolis, Indiana, in case you're interested. And it was a youth camp. Every week, they would bring new kids in on a Monday. Friday, they'd ship them out. We'd have Saturday and Sunday to recuperate <laughs> because there were hundreds of kids from six, seven years old, all the way up to 17, 18 years old. So a whole wide spectrum of problems. And you never knew what week, what age bracket you would have. You'd eat with them, sleep with them, uh, have activities with them, minister to them, have services with them, great time. Well, one week we had a group of teenagers and they just happened to be girls and man, when they brought them in on a Monday, we knew we were in for some challenges. <laughs> you would have thought they would have just brought in a, a, a van of uh, strippers. <laughs> I'll just paint a picture for you. And I mean, with the clothing, they brought the attitude. You ever meet anybody with a bad tude? <laughs> a bad attitude? And they came in, and they wanted nothing to do with God. I mean, Monday night they came in the service and that you could tell they were just sitting there with um, we are in we are in agreement. We're all in agreement. We are going to be defiant in every area and aspect. And no matter what you say, we're not going to amen it. We're not going to shake our head yes. And we may do what you tell us to do, but we're going to do it with an attitude. <laughs> and your attitude is important, even concerning receiving. Your attitude can prevent you from receiving from God. And so we just went to prayer. I mean, every morning when we would all gather to pray, uh, all of the counselors, we would intercede for them. We would believe God for them. We would specifically t target them in prayer. And so uh, Thursday night came along and we had Thursday night service. Nothing had changed. We didn't see one bit of improvement. We had the service, and I happened to preach that night. And I can't tell you what I preached on, but I was probably desperate for God to do something. Now, now, they put the girls with girl counselors and the guys with guy counselors. So they weren't my girls, but they were on my heart because these girls needed Jesus. They needed help. I mean, if nothing else, we were praying because the impact they'd have on the world wouldn't be good. I mean, these girls were just unified in their vision. And so we had the service and I hung out afterward and a girl that was their counselor that I went to school with, I went to college with, she went ahead and she took the girls after the service back to their cabin. Now we had these little cabins and I happened to be staying in a teepee. Yes, it was a literal teepee and it was the coolest thing. I mean to tell you, I loved it. It was awesome. And you would come across a bridge. There was my teepee. Then you'd go down the road a little bit and to the left was the girl's cabin. And so my friend, their counselor had, was gonna take them back to their cabin. So I hung out and talked to people and people were telling me what they thought of the message and how God blessed them. And I was there maybe 10, 15 minutes, if that. So I decided to leave and I'm gonna walk back to go back to my teepee. And it was, it happened to be foggy that night. And something I should let you know just before I continue, several weeks prior to this event that I'm about to tell you about, the service that I preached, I had been out praying and I was listening to a minister that I really liked, Dwight Thompson. And uh, he, I don't remember what I was listening to, it doesn't matter. But while I was listening to him, I, I happened to be walking across that bridge that there was a little river underneath that as you walked across, my teepee was there. And so I was just kind of lingering, walking slowly, meandering around. And when I walked on the top of that bridge, the Holy Spirit of God, the same Holy Spirit that I've recognized his voice for years since I was 15 years old, uh, all of these years, you know, same voice, uh, same intonation. Uh, now, some may say, Bob, did you hear him in your ears? No, I heard him in my spirit. 
It's better. <laughs> you hear in your ears, you got to block out all this other mess. Oh no, we hear with our spirit. Spirit to spirit. Hey, Amen. No operator. <laughs> no AT&T. Come on, somebody. He just, the Holy Ghost speaks to us. Now, let me stop. You say God speaks to you? Well, let me ask you, what father would not speak to his children and we would look and say, oh, that's almost child abuse. Why would we think if our earthly father speaks to us that our heavenly father would not? Come on, somebody. Come on, this is real that we have. It's a real relationship that we're walking in, living in, talking in, thinking in, receiving in. And so while I was on that bridge praying, the Holy Spirit said the same thing that you have heard on this cassette tape that you're listening to. And it was uh, on the cassette tape, there was a message by Dwight Thompson, and he was talking about a youth camp that he had been preaching at. And they had a bunch of preacher's kids that were there that were addicted to drugs, they were away from God, and didn't want anything to do with God, very bitter. And one night they were preaching, it was a week-long uh, session of meetings, and the same thing was happening there on this cassette tape in this story that was happening in this youth camp. Very stubborn group of young people. And he said suddenly as he was preaching, the young people just got up and began to walk toward the front. And as they began to walk toward the front, the power of God would touch them. They would just fall out. Nobody touch them. Nobody blow on them. Nobody, nobody throw anything at them. They just, they just fell out under the power of God. They never made it to the altar. And so Dwight Thompson stopped preaching and he just started looking. Now I want to tell you something. Later in Bible college, the pastor of that church came and spoke at the Bible college and I asked him about this story and he said, everything that you heard actually happened. I was there. So what they later found out is at the moment of those young people falling out under the power of God and becoming, uh, getting delivered, there were people in the parking lot and it had been raining. And as they went to get into the car, when this event, this moment happened, the power of God not only hit those young people in the sanctuary, it went all across the church grounds, the campus of that ministry. And people could not even get their car key in the car because the power of God just knocked them out. There were people outside running around the rain, speaking in tongues, shouting unto God, blessing God, worshiping God. Now, if this bothers you, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Because <laughs> this is what I live for. I live for a move of God, a demonstration of God, that a man has nothing to do with it other than believing to receive what God has promised. We're living in a day that if you're a person that desires recognition, notoriety, you are insignificant concerning this latter rain move of God that we're about to experience. People fell out all over the property. There were people just rejoicing and shouting. And they found out that one of the people out on the property had been looking at the church and the moment that this happened, there was, and the only way they could describe it was like a bolt of lightning was dancing on the steeple of that church as this was taking place. Who Lord, let it happen to somebody today that is watching this program. If ever we've needed a move of God, not only in the United States, but all over the world and around the globe, it is the day that we are living in today. We are not hopeless. We are not impotent church. We are the church, the power of God in literal, physical, bodily form present on the planet to demonstrate what the word says will happen if we will only receive. Well, these young people in this youth camp that I was listening to on the cassette tape that Dwight Thompson was preaching to were thoroughly and completely delivered. Now, what does that have to do with this story? As I walked across that bridge, listening to this, the Holy Ghost said the same thing you're hearing now on this tape, you will experience in this camp. Let's go back to that Friday night when I was preaching. I finished talking, 10 minutes maybe. I began to walk back to my TP. And as I said, it was a little foggy. 
when I walked up to that bridge, I saw my friend who I went to college with just standing there worshiping God. And there was one girl standing in front of her. But as I got closer, I looked around and the seven girls that she was in charge of, of the seven, six of them were laying out on the ground. The only way I can describe it is if you were to say they're standing there and you took a machine gun and you just laid them out. Now I know so that bothers some people, but hang in there, okay? <laughs> and I saw these six girls laying there. One of them had fallen back and there was a guardrail that went across this bridge. Her head was laying all the way back to where her eyes, if they were open, she would have been able to see the water. All of these girls that were laying there were speaking in tongues, worshiping God. These same girls that were trying to seduce the young men of the camp. These young girls that wanted nothing to do with God. These young girls that would have rather been anywhere than at that camp. These same girls were worshiping God. And I came up and I asked my friend, I said, what happened? She said, I, I don't know. She said, all I know is we left the service, we were walking back, and when we got there to this spot of the bridge, the power of God just blew in like a wind and knocked these girls out. And there was one girl standing with the counselor who had not yet experienced this. And I just felt led to quickly walk over her and gently lay my hands on her. And I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, what you have done to these other six girls, I pray that you would let this precious young woman experience the same. And immediately, the power of God hit her. She fell out on the gravel floor, on the gravel road, and began to worship God and speak in tongues. Now, you say, what happened next? This is significant. Because not everyone that you see falling out on the floor, not everyone is experiencing the presence of God. There are some people that feel that they're supposed to fall out when somebody lays hands on them. There are some ministers that will not be satisfied until you're laying on the flat of your back because that is their glory. Oh, we had people fall out all over. The Listen, that's wonderful. But there is a defining line between the genuine and the artificial. And you want what's real, my friend. You don't want to show at a circus. You don't want bragging rights for Sunday afternoon brunch. You want a move of God. You want the power and the presence of God to flow in you and through you, using you wherever you go. Not just in church, but everywhere you go. You're a walking, talking, living, breathing time bomb for the enemy. Ah, he doesn't like you, my friend, because he knows what's in you. Yeah. All of these girls, several of them, half of these girls, we had to physically carry back to their cabin. They couldn't walk. They could hardly even articulate English. We laid them in their, their cots, all went back to sleep. We, we went to sleep, went to our own cabins and teepee. And we're going to be a little long today, so just stick in there, amen? Because if you've turned off in this story, you're just... There ain't nothing that can stir your bowl. Your spoon has fallen out. <laughs> the next morning we had breakfast. Several of these girls walked to the breakfast dining room like they were drunk. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Let it happen again, Lord. It is happening in different places. Don't get me wrong. But not like we see in the Word. Not like we've heard promised in Joel that in the last day saith the Lord, I will, I will. Come on, somebody. Not a preacher, not a prophet, not a person, not a personality, but I, God himself, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Come on. 
Is there something within your heart that desires for that, longs for that, to where it's not about you, it's not about what you got to do, your work, the sweat of your brow, that God has decided to flow through you and use you in such a way that many of the things Come on, I'm ready for a day that there's some stuff that happens that you just can't flat out explain in a newsletter. You can't articulate for a website. You just got to say we had a move of God and if you want it, you need to come on. <laughs> oh, several of these girls, two of them, they got their tray of food. They sat there and while they were going to eat their food, it's as if they just looked and said, night, night, and just fell right out. Now, this is not a story I heard. This is not something that I read. This is not a dream I dream. This is what Bob Fowler has been an eyewitness account of, of what it's like when someone gets to the point of receiving something from God and experience it in its fullness. Come on, you don't want to be ankle deep. Do you? You don't want your relationship with God to be waist deep? Do you? You don't want it just to be up to your shoulders? Do you? You want to be so deep and immersed in the love and the grace and the mercy and the tenderness of God, but in the fullness of God that you can't even touch the bottom. You're swimming in it. Oh, and in that place, church, <laughs> in that place, my friend, there is such freedom. You're free from what others think, what others say, even including yourself. God is going to do it again. The question is, will you and I be a part of it? Are we willing? Are we obedient? Do we desire it more than anything else? To walk in him, think in him, talk in him, relate in him, have his perspective, see people as he sees them. Well, that's a big one for all of us, isn't it? Because the enemy is coming against people, not coming against black people or white people, Hispanic people, Asian people, He's not coming against certain groups of people, men, women. He's coming against everyone, everyone. But if you get caught up in what is being talked about today, the perversion of diluting the truth and putting in your own narrative and listening and believing someone else's narrative other than the word of God, you're going to miss it. And listen, there are a lot of children of God that they say they love the Lord, but when it comes to what we're talking about, receiving, walking in Him, thinking in Him, surrendering to Him, all that I have is yours, Lord, not just 10%. Not just 10%. Where does God want us to get? And we're going to pick this up tomorrow because the Holy Ghost, you know, and that's cool with me. That's, that's wonderful with me. If you didn't get something out of today, I, I don't know. You're going to have to reevaluate, reassess, <laughs> refocus, <laughs> rewind. <laughs> ah, but in all of our lives, the Holy Spirit, if you're a child of God, wants you to be in such a place of surrender, complete yieldedness to Him, that when the pastor begins to take the offering and receive the offering, not only do you rejoice that you get to give 10% of your income and add an offering, but that your attitude is, Lord, all that I have is yours. Boy, we're good about giving God all of our sin because we don't want any sin in our life. Oh, God, I give you all of my sin. But have you said, God, I give you all of my money? Do you know that if it was not for God's love and grace for you, he'd snatch the breath right underneath your nose? Every breath you take right now as you're watching this program is because your heavenly father cherishes you and loves you and has given everything for you to such an extent 
that he desires you to walk in his fullness. And that could be possibly the reason in your life that you're experiencing the pressure that you are. You know, people will fight it. They'll fight preaching, they'll fight teaching, they'll fight worship, they'll fight it, they'll resist it. But if you're a child of God, God wants you to be to such a point that you are ready to receive and ready to give. God, all I have is yours. I want all you have. How many people have said, I want all you have for my life? Have you said, God, you have all of my life? And that includes every aspect of your life, your time, your talent, your gifting, and yes, your finances or your resources. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, I thank you for invading the program. Ah, I thank you for invading our plans, invading our thoughts. Do it again, Lord. Do it again. You've shown me that I will experience it again in a greater measure. You have told me that I will see the day when people can't even walk out of their car into the parking lot, through the parking lot, and into the church because the power of God's flowing so greatly. You've already shown me that it's going to happen, not just at a camp meeting for young people who are troubled. They're pastor's kids, and they're in trouble. But you've shown me the day that people will fall out of their cars under the power of God as they're sitting in the parking lot of the church, that they will walk down hallways heading to a sanctuary and never quite make it that some will make it in through the doors of the sanctuary, but they'll straggle like, struggle and, 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 and stagger like drunk men and women. Do it again, Lord. Do it in my life and do it in their life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, this is the beginning of a new week, but a continuation of how to receive. I pray today's program has been a blessing to you. If it has, you have a responsibility, or should I say opportunity, to share this program with somebody that you know, that it will be a blessing to you. Hey, if you haven't been to our YouTube channel, what are you waiting on? I wanna encourage you to go there at Faith is the Victory Fellowship YouTube. There you're gonna find all of our programs and they will be a blessing to you. While you're there, subscribe. Hey, last but not least, after the program, in the description section here on Facebook, the Faith is a Victory Fellowship page. Go into the, dis the description section and there you're gonna find several safe, simple and secure ways in which you can give. You can sow a financial seed very easily into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. I'm gonna let you know we need your help. There are several projects that we have that have been birthed in our spirit that we the only thing that's holding us back is finances and so i'm asking you to give give generously and give liberally we're gonna look <laughs> you know you got to be careful when you use that word liberal today because the devil's tried to hijack it it's a beautiful word a great word but the devil has turned it into something of a perversion we're not talking about that we're talking about giving without limits all that i have is yours. But in the details section, I want to ask you to go there and give generously. And I know that God will certainly bless you. Well, my time is well up, but I want to thank you for being with me today. I'm excited about this week. God has an incredible, awesome word for you. I want to tell you that I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, never, ever forget. He is is faithful.